Well, now that I've calmed down a bit, let's evaluate where we're at. So far, not so good. What else are we going to do? Let's remain calm. Our story so far is that we're investigating convective roles in a thin fluid layer as a function of this parameter r. Now, when r was between 0 and 1, the only solution that we had was a sink at the origin. Everything is stable. This is like a system of pure conductance where the heat is just flowing from bottom to top. But as we increase that temperature gradient between the bottom and the top, we get some instabilities that develop. Past r equals 1, our origin becomes unstable, that pure conductance. And what we have is some convection that occurs. In a supercritical pitchfork bifurcation, we shed a pair of stable equilibria. Now, at some point, those sinks, those stable equilibria, develop a complex conjugate pair of stable eigenvalues. And so in some two-dimensional eigenspace, we have a spiraling that goes into the equilibria. But what we found is that there is a Hopf bifurcation at the value where r equals sigma times quantity sigma plus b plus 3, all divided by sigma minus b minus 1. And what that means is that this pair of equilibria in that two-dimensional complex eigenspace, what we have is a transition from a spiral sink to a spiral source. And because this is a subcritical Hopf, that means that there are unstable limit cycles to the left of this bifurcation. This Hopf bifurcation is where those unstable limit cycles collapse into the equilibria and die. Now, this is a bit disconcerting because where did those unstable limit cycles come from? And what's happening now? Well, if we summarize what we know about the equilibria post Hopf, ergo propter Hopf, then what do we have? At the origin, we have two stable directions and one unstable direction. We know the dimensions of our eigenspaces. That's the simple one. The ones that are more complex are this pair of equilibria after the Hopf. Let's say we we'll call them on the left and on the right. And on the left, what we have is a one-dimensional stable eigenspace, a two-dimensional unstable eigenspace with spiraling. Now, on the right, we have exactly the same thing. This system is perfectly symmetric. That's why the Hopf bifurcations are happening at the same place at both equilibria. Okay, this is what things look like locally. This is a local picture, but we need to go from local to global. And global? That's not so easy. But here's something that will help. A lemma. This system, the Lorentz system, has a global attractor. That means that every initial condition eventually lies within some nice bounded set of fixed size. If we use the language that we used back in volume two, this has a trapping region. In fact, it's just some ball. It's not even all that big. Once you get inside that ball, you stay inside that ball forever and ever and ever. Now, in volume two, we use the Poincaré-Bendixson theorem to say that, well, you're either going to equilibria or limit cycles, but we're in 3D, and there is no Poincaré-Bendixson theorem at our disposal. So what do you do? Well, you, you start, and then you stay within this bounded region, and there aren't any equilibria that are global sinks, so you've got to be doing something we haven't been able to find any limit cycles after this Hopf bifurcation. So what do you do? Well, now then, we need more. We need more what? Well, we definitely need some simulations. We don't have any of those yet. So we need some more simulations. We're going to need some more imagination to understand what is happening in this Lorentz system. And 
most importantly, we're going to need more math. That is what is going to be coming next.